Hi guys, welcome to episode six of Real Estate and Real Life. For anyone that's joining us now for their first time, um, what I'm in the middle of doing is interviewing brokers who are at all different paths of their career from all different backgrounds. Um, male, female, have been doing it for six years, have been doing it for six months and trying to give a raw and authentic, transparent look into what real estate is like in Dubai and also what real life is like in Dubai. And today we're joined with Jay, we just call him Jay-Z. Um, he is our blue water specialist, also sells property in Dubai Marina. He has went from strength to strength and he is the number one lead generating agent on Blue Waters Island. Um, and I'm very excited to talk to him today. So Jay, thanks so much for taking the time out of your day to come and chat with me. Um, as I've just said, you know, you're one of the highest performing agents in the company. You, uh, you've went from strength to strength. It wasn't always easy for you. Um, it's been a journey. But tell me a bit about Jay-Z and what home life was like for you. What was your jobs in the past and, you know, what was growing up like? So, yeah, obviously Jay-Z grew up in Watford and wasn't always easy. Not as easy as it is now, that's for sure. Um, so I was in construction. I had a construction background from, I don't know, the age of 16 when I left school. Went straight into property, basically. Uh, obviously more hands-on back then. As I got older, my back started hurting and, uh, you know, had to get off the tools. So, yeah, I went basically from um, hands-on approach to being a site manager. Mm -hmm. And then it got to a point where we used to come to Dubai, you know, three, four times a year. My, my, one of my best, best friends, he moved to Dubai probably nine years ago now. Uh -huh. um, so I was always on the brinks of obviously moving. Kept putting it off every year. Even his dad was saying to me, like, Jay, come on, when are you going to move there? And uh, eventually, yeah, I got everything tied up back in the UK and made that move. So that's where we're at now. Fantastic. It's brilliant. Amazing. So, Jay, as you said, you had friends out here. You had holidayed in Dubai three, four times a year. What made you decide to move to Dubai and was real estate your first choice? So basically, uh, obviously, coming back and forth, I bought my mum and brother out and we stayed, I think, for a month. Uh -huh. Um just before obviously the COVID things went crazy. So we just nipped out in time. We was here, I can't remember which year it was now, it's been so long ago. Um, but we was here for say, like I say, a month and mum and brother, even they loved it. My mum, she now lives in the States, so mm -hmm. she doesn't uh, have to bear the UK weather as well. Yeah. Um, real estate was kind of something that I fell into. I didn't really have an idea when I moved across um, what I was going to do, but it was just that month in Dubai. I was like, okay, this is going to be the last time I go back to the UK. I'll go back, do what I need to do and, and head back out. So it was only that I heard from a few people about them doing real estate. And then it was, it wasn't even the, the money at first. It was kind of like, okay, people are, are moving across and doing real estate. Mm -hmm. For me, it was, okay, I, I've done property. Yeah, It's a slightly different approach, but the transition was there for me uh, and I was sort of, I remember my uh, my interview with Rashan and, and basically said to him, look, this is what I do now in the property game. So I think I'll be good at sort of going into properties with people and showing them, okay, this is what I see. Yeah. What do you see? Let's make it happen. Yeah. Amazing. So it's interesting because obviously this is now our sixth sit down with a six different person. Mm -hmm. You're the first so far that had, hadn't decided they were coming to do real estate but they knew they wanted to move to Dubai. Yeah, yeah. So all the other people we've spoke to so far, it's been, I'm moving to Dubai to do real estate. And you say you just sort of fell into it because the skills were transferable, which has been great. And uh, and you could say, obviously, you've worked with us since uh, day one of moving to Dubai, which is great. Um, you've actually never worked at another company. So you're also getting a different side there because some of the guys we've interviewed have worked at other companies. Um, so yeah, Jay, thanks so much. I appreciate that answer. No worries. So Jay, with, you mentioned COVID earlier. Um, during COVID, they released Selling Sunset and obviously I'm a big fan of Million Dollar Listing as well. And uh, those two TV programs, they frame real estate in a very glamorous and glitzy way. And some of the job is glamorous and glitzy, don't get me wrong. But how does Dubai real estate compare to what your daily life actually is and what that show looks? Yeah, so uh, I obviously watched those as well, just for the insight. I think the family enjoy the, the drama more than the real estate part of it. Yeah. So I think it, it does compare definitely. It doesn't show, it shows more the drama between the brokers than it does 
the brokers between the buyers and sellers. Yeah. That I think is the only thing that, that doesn't compare to the shows. It's not as easy as they make it look. Uh -huh. It's definitely not as easy. They do a view and they get an offer, they close a deal. Exactly, yeah. You know, I'm, I just finished a deal yesterday and I've been out with the guy, I think, for maybe four months now. So it's been, it's been a, a, a journey. journey. Yeah. I think in terms of um, how it compares overall, definitely it shows the, the strengths and the weaknesses of people. I don't think it's, it's something I could recommend to everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, you, people have to be ready for what they're getting into. Myself, um, I like the shows. It, it shows the, the high, high parts, mm -hmm. which is obviously what we're here for. The, the lower parts is, is not as easy as it does look, as I mentioned, mm -hmm. but it's definitely worth it. So would you agree in saying that those shows maybe show maybe five to 10% of what your job looks like, which is showing these glamorous properties compared to those days when you're searching for something and you're rattling that phone and you know, you've spent nine hours at your desk trying to find something. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. So it is, it is easy once the deal's closed. Yeah. It's the, for example, I had a client who told me their budget was 25 million. They had that spare to spend. I could not find anything for them to buy. <laughs> I'm starting to worry now, Jay. Couldn't find <laughs> anything with 25 million Durham. Um, no, but obviously I, I know you're the best at what you do. So I, I, if you can't find something, I don't think anyone can. Have those guys bought something now yet? Yeah, they've they've bought plenty from me. From since. you? Okay, good. Definitely, Just checking, yeah. or we'd be having a chat. Don't after. worry. No, we uh, we've sold them many properties. We manage their portfolio. We actually rent their properties for them, and oh. they rent from us as well. Amazing, brilliant. Thanks so much, Jay. Good answer. So Jay, this job is a high pressure job. It's a performance based job or commission based as some people call it. Uh, I prefer performance based. You get what you put in or you get what you earn. Um, what challenges do you find in the industry? And obviously you're a broker who in the past two and a half years have went and produced phenomenal figures in leasing. You've now produced phenomenal figures in sales. You've carried on the whole spectrum. Um, so what challenges have you found in this industry? Yeah, definitely. Um, thanks to obviously Uncle Neil in the office, yourself, <laughs> Callum. Um, we've uh, we've managed to sort of narrow down where it needs to be in terms of the market and the niches. You know, it's not it's not just like okay, this person wants to buy, this person wants to sell. Mm -hmm. The fi the things I find challenging is connecting the dots because most of the time, this party thinks they know more than me that party thinks they know more than me when I live and breathe this. We do this 24 seven. Yeah. So we work off facts, we work off figures, we work off the, the strategies that, for example, uh, uh, an entry strategy with an exit strategy. Uh -huh. The parties, they, they kind of move the, the goalposts. Yeah. They want to be here, you get here, and then they sort of creep up here. I think that's one of the things I find the hardest is, um, expectations would you say the expectations of people uh, and also when they don't agree with something they already agreed with yeah that's kind of pretty much the only things that i um that's good and this isn't a question i prepared you for jay but that's something that um, no one's touched on yet would you agree that in dubai it's a lot harder to keep people to their word than in the uk um or in other places in the world because uh, there's so many different cultures some places a promise or an agreement doesn't mean as much as it does to us and, and where we're from. So is that something you'd say could be a potential um, yeah. problem in, in, in that? Yeah, I wouldn't say it's a problem. It, it's a good and a bad thing because I enjoy the fact that there's so many different cultures in Dubai. Uh -huh. You get to meet so many people. You can meet John over there, yeah. Rashan over there. Yeah. And I think it's just like me and you can shake on something. Yeah. We're done, we're agreed. We don't need paperwork. Yeah. With the other um, cultures and also the promises that other people make them, mm -hmm. that kind of brings into uh, effect a kind of slippery slope. Understood. Fine. I get exactly what you're saying. So it's a great insight into you know the challenges of a real estate broker from one of our top performing agents. Um, thanks for that, Jay. It's a, it's a lot of wisdom in there. So Jay, you're one of the brokers um, and obviously I've been doing this a long time. I don't remember a time where you've came and really been struggling as in money wise. And uh, I'm not ashamed to say that. There's brokers that sometimes it's tough and it just clicks. I don't remember a time where you have that. But what I'd say is I know there's also tough times um, and it could be more things than just money. 
So what keeps you in the industry and is this job life changing? Oh, 100%. 100%. You know, going from where I was in the UK, I was not in a bad place, mm -hmm. but not in any way, shape or form where I am now. Okay. Luckily for me, um, I've managed to sort of take a grasp on it. Financially, I'm, I'm doing okay. We won't go more than that, but um, I think more so it's the, um, not so much the money. Mm -hmm. It's more so that, as you said, it's uh, performance based. Mm -hmm. So for me personally, obviously being one of the top brokers, it's difficult whenever you have, you know, a, a, a deal falls through or someone doesn't stick to their word. It's more the stress of, you know, having to let people down mm. and it being off the back of your name. That's probably one of the things that stresses me the most. Um, but again, like you said, I'm never really in a position where I'm struggling for finances. Uh -huh. That probably helps me in the fact of um, I can still push off the back of my performance, you know? Yeah. It's, it's easier for me to... There's not that desperation to... of being down to your last pennies. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And, and don't get me wrong, when I first started, there mm. was always doubts of like, oh, guys, am, am I going to make it through? Not that I'd show it. No, You know me, I like to check... You did stay, well. Yeah, you, you hit it well. Stay calm and collective. Um, but it definitely does get to you sometimes. It's nice to be in a position where I don't have to, you know, be pushing and pushing and pushing mm -hmm. i think that helps me in the marketplace of you know let's let's go let's take a look at this let's make a strategy instead of you know guys you need to buy this now yeah it, it's gonna go i would definitely agree with you there jay that i i have seen and i would say that you are one of the best relationship builders mm -hmm. in the market for brokerage and that's no slight on any of the other brokers uh, even myself as a broker when i was i look at what you do with your clients and it blows me away um, this is a completely separate thing. I've actually just remembered it. But for anyone that's listening right now, Jay actually buys things for clients that he doesn't have yet. Um, and this is something <laughs> that we brought up in our, our, our performance coaching recently. Jay actually buys gifts because in Dubai, when you sell a property, you then turn up to the transfer office and that's when they do everything. They change the deeds, they pay the money and so on. And even if Jay isn't working on a deal at the moment or doesn't have a deal closing at the moment, he's already bought gifts for clients that will come. So that's the level of confidence that he has in his abilities. And uh, sorry, I'm not meaning to just <laughs> give you the compliments here. This is something that I think every broker out there should be doing. And you know that after you told me about that, I, I told everyone, guys, like, buy these gifts for these clients that will come mm -hmm. because that's the level of confidence you need to have in your relationship building. Yeah, it, it's it's just something for me that that gives you that edge. You know, uh -huh. you want people to remember you. You want people to, to refer you business. But at the same time, it's about giving back. It's about being a good person. I think with the coaching we do, uh, obviously Aiden, which is yeah. courtesy of you guys, very much thankful. It's more about having an effect on the world and, and being a good person. Mm -hmm. like internally so i like to i like to give back but again it like you say comes with confidence mm -hmm. comes with finances um it's putting it into the future of you know i know people are going to come to me mm -hmm. i've got this ready for them yeah. it's not like crazy gifts it's no. just small things for the family you know experiences but it's everything that helps towards you know certifying my name yeah, and, and I agree, and I, that's that's what I'm saying again is, you know, the relationship building you have, and that's not just with clients, that's also with referral business, mm -hmm. that's also with securities, with restaurants, with you you name it, and, you know, there's a reason why you're doing as well as you do, yeah. because things are going to be easier, because a referral is much better business than a cold lead, mm -hmm. um, a referral already knows you're good at what you do. So, yeah, Jay, that's some amazing knowledge, and, and something that any new broker listening to this, or someone who's thinking of entering the market, should be sitting going like, wow, that is just a nugget of wisdom that I should be latching onto. So yeah, thanks for thanks for putting that out there. Sorry if I've given the game away. Next thing you know, every broker <laughs> in Dubai will be buying gifts for deals they've not done yet. Yeah. But it's, it's just something when I heard you did that, I was like, wow. Jay, we're two and a half years into the journey, which is tiny when you really think of the length of the career and the job that you're going to have. Um, where do you see yourself in a year? And I look at where you were a year ago and where you are now, and I'm blown away. So it'll be interesting to look back at this video a year from now and see if we've kept ourselves accountable. Definitely, definitely. You know, from start to where we are now, it's been such a journey. Obviously, I've grown from the beginning with the company. I think the guys opened in January and I got here March 
whichever year it was. Yeah. But um, I think, say, from now, where we are, in a year's time, well, actually, give me a month or so, I'll be associate director. Mm -hmm. uh, that's my next aim. Obviously, all of the goals I've set so far in terms of figures, um, I'm well on track for putting some money back into the industry myself, you mm -hmm. know, have to get some investments back in yeah. there. So in a year's time, I would say um, top of the food chain, mm -hmm. associate director, some more investments back into Dubai, which obviously I strongly believe in. The way the, the, the country's moving, the Emirate of Dubai, even, you know, Abu Dhabi, mm -hmm. it's... For me, it's a solid investment. Yeah. So I see myself in a year's time with more investments, yeah. um, associate director on my back yeah. instead of obviously principal. Uh, that's my aim and my goal. And I pretty much see myself, you know, give me a year, the family will be there, the, um, the other houses, all the things that we're here for, you know, yeah. the, the things that I can't do in the UK sufficiently uh, financially and obviously from a safety aspect, it's it's uh, one of my main goals is to be as far ahead as I can. We always have this conversation about uh, the further you go, the more properties you should be able to buy, yeah. which obviously we've stuck to this year so yeah. far. So again, it's just sticking to the plan. Keep working on clientele, keep working on future business, mm -hmm. putting money back into the system um, and overall being a good person. Now, Jay, obviously, like I said, we're going to look back in a year from now. How certain are you that you're going to be associate director? I'm a million percent certain. Within a month or so, I'll be associate director. Okay, good. I'm glad. I'm glad. I love that. We love accountability, don't we? We do. So, Jay, something that we often try to find out from brokers who move here is what their why is. It allows us to work out what their motivation is, why they want to do this job, why did you take no salary, but yet you've got uncapped earnings and you can earn life-changing money. What's your why? To be honest with you, my why is obviously seeing from where we come as kids. Um, I got my hustle from my mum, basically. She, uh, I think she did her master's when she was around 40. Or probably shouldn't have said her age there. But um, yeah, she went to university, was working a job. At the later age, obviously, we was, I've got a twin brother, we was um, obviously working ourselves. And my why was pretty much, okay, I've seen how hard my mum had to work at the later stages. Mm. I need to sort of, my job in the UK, I was, I was top of the food chain already anyway, but I was capped, you know. Mm. It wasn't like I was making life-changing money. I could just about do what I needed to do. But looking at what my mum had to do, to stay afloat, it was my why of, okay, well, I've hit a ceiling now. Mm -hmm. What can I do to kind of sidestep and step up again? Mm -hmm. And that again comes back into falling into the, the real estate world. It wasn't my first go-to because I didn't really know much about it. It's just I was looking at what I could do in Dubai because I didn't want to be in the UK anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and then I saw it, heard it jumped in the deep end which as you said it's it's commission only no salary which is scary it is definitely a scary thing to do but again it comes back to the why like i want to get to a point where i can say to my mum you know you've earned this when she flies over from the us now you know i've, I've got an envelope ready for her so she hasn't got to touch her bank card and yeah. things like this you know this is what keeps me accountable i want to take care of my mum i want to look after the missus I want yeah. to, when the kids are there I don't want them to have to go through what we went through as kids. So that's what, what keeps me going and that's my why. Amazing. I'm just giving me goosebumps, mate. <laughs> but no, uh, and Jay, I think that's a real, you know, we're only going to sit down with 12 brokers over the next couple of weeks. And uh, But I know in, the, in that office, there's a lot of people with the same sort of sentiment. And I feel that a lot of people that come over and put themselves through this stress and pressure to achieve what people like you achieve, it is a lot of looking back at what you grew up with or looking back at how you grew up and saying, I don't want to see that for the future generations or for my name. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah, amazing. Uh, thanks, Jay. Really, really in-depth answer. <laughs> Jay, you've only ever worked at White & Co., um, which I'm delighted about. <laughs> but you have friends at other brokerages. You know people. You've met people. Um, 
what would you say or what advice would you give to someone who's newly looking to move to Dubai and they're going to go out and search for the right company? What do they need to keep their eyes open for? I think definitely, well, me certainly when I was looking, it was, I was concentrating on the culture of the company, mm. which sort of pushed me towards you guys. As you know, we've built the culture inside ourselves from the beginning. I think that's a, that's a huge part in where you can go, where you can get to. I mean, there's a lot of companies that do some good numbers out there, but for me, it's about, like I get messages all the time. Do you want to join here? Do you want to join there? We've seen what you do. And for me, it's, I would never leave the company. I don't have a reason to because we concentrate on giving back and excelling. So not just saying, yes, you have to come and work with us, no, no, of course, but I would say in, in terms of looking for a company, you know, check the stats, check the training, check the, uh, the background stories, speak to agents that work there. Mm -hmm. There will always be good and bad stories probably. But for me, I would suggest looking at how the company progresses in terms of the, the schooling, the, the culture, the way that they progress themselves. Do they evolve with the market? Because keep in mind, it's not always an up market. Mm. Sometimes there's a down market. And that's when you see but the real brokers. That's when you see the people who have, you know, been tucked in and tucked tight with their, their clients because it's easier when it's a, a, a up market, but when it's a down market and, and people might be sort of a bit iffy, the guys who have got the phone books, they're the ones who are going to be heavy hitters, as we like to say. Yeah. But yeah, again, back to the question. Um, it's just a case of what can the company provide you? Because at the same time, you're helping them build the brand. You're helping them bring money into the company. Um, obviously me, I work off the back of my name, but I'm attached to White & Co. So it comes into where do you see yourself going? Where do you see the company going? Mm. Are they going to look out for you? Are you going to become another fish in the sea? These are the things I looked for. So I definitely would suggest checking the backgrounds, making sure it's somewhere they're going to look after you. They're not just going to say, okay, we like him, but we don't really like him. Mm -hmm. It happens. So things are going all right away in Koya. Yeah? For me, I'm good. Good. I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll pay you after. Um, but Jay, interestingly enough, you are now the sixth person who has sat and said to reach out to the brokers. And someone who's watching this might not have spoke to, or they might not have watched the other five episodes. So I'll say it very clearly now. I am filled with 100% confidence that anyone out there can reach out to the brokers in our company. Don't get me wrong, reaching out to someone who's been there for a year or three years or, or you know, someone that's been there longer versus someone who's brand new, you might find more information. Um, but feel free to reach out to anyone in there because I know what we do and I know that we really do try our best to care about everyone and give back. So, yeah, I appreciate you saying that, mate. Um, that leads us on to our next question. So they have went out, they've met the companies, they've decided who they want to work for, and now they're in the deep end, if you will. Um, what do they need to keep an eye open for or what do they need to do to get ahead in the beginning? What should they be focusing on doing? Well, I can only speak on what I did. Mm -hmm. um, I always give advice. I think advice is something that people can just take opinions from. It's something I did was, you know, knuckle down on an area which you kind of believe in mm. where you see yourself being um, and then just becoming that specialist. For me, you know, Blue Waters was my thing as soon as I started, which I kind of fell into, but I knew as soon as I was there, the first time I went to the island, that was it. I was straight online, you know, floor plans, transactions, um, speaking to people about the area, looking at what's coming up in the area. The, the only thing I can focus on, uh, tell people to focus on is you know, become that specialist. Once you become that specialist, that will be your outreach into Dubai instead of, you know, just for example, being one specific area. Mm. The thing I could tell people, start off, know your area, know your thing, become the, the president, as you will, of that, that estate. Um, and that will help you lead on to becoming an overall Dubai um, specialist. So, you want your name to be synonymous with that area. Example, we call you Blue Waters J. Exactly. We've got Jason, who's Maidan Man, and plenty of others who are creating their own brand. 
And I believe that a lot of your clients do literally think of you as Blue Waters J. I mean, it's your, your Instagram name and yeah. everything. Yeah. Um, so would you agree that when brokers come here, it's about, you know, getting your head down, not getting distracted? Do you think some people come here for the wrong reasons? For me, I was quite lucky because, as I said earlier, I kind of left it late to come. Mm. So I was probably past the stage of, you know, coming and going and drinking. I don't really drink anyway, mm. so I'm a step ahead. Yeah. But I think a lot of people get caught up. So, uh -huh. again, to new brokers, people who have just started wherever you're starting, be careful. <laughs> be careful because, you know, we are commission only. We're a, a performance-based team, as you will, whichever team you're in. It's um, it's a tough one. Don't get me wrong. It's it's easy to go. A lot up. of distractions. There's a lot of distractions, especially in Dubai. You know, it's it's sunny all the time. You yeah. can go to the beach whenever you feel like it. You can go for a drink whenever you feel like it. You can go to eat in fancy places. It's not something that's easy to sort of say no to. But again, when you're new to this industry, you need to really solidify yourself to to be that guy mm. or, or that lady. Yeah. So branding is everything. Um, everything you can do to put you in a better position. There'll be a, a lot of times when you might slip up, but again, as long as you get back on that horse and keep going. Yeah. No one's expecting them to be perfect. We all, you know, uh, we see new brokers coming to the market exactly. all the time and they're at zero gravity or they're at whatever brunch it is. And it's like, have your fun quickly, get out of the way. Yes. And then let's get your head down or, you know, new brokers that move here, come out two weeks before you start. Get all your fun out of the way two weeks before you start yeah. and then head down because it can change your life. Yeah, when I remember when I started, um, I think I was, uh, I can't remember which week it was, but Rashan had said to me, you know, uh, we can give you a week's head start. You can have a week rest and then start your training next week. I said, Rashan, I don't care if I'm the only one in the class, just get me straight in there. So I landed, yeah. for example, Wednesday, um, met everyone on the Friday, uh -huh. I had the choice to start the week after, I was straight in, straight into training. I didn't want no distractions, yeah, yeah, yeah. straight to work. Um, it's too easy to get distracted. I agree. Dedication, obviously this is the main thing. So don't let them get you slip. So Jay, off the back of what you just said, some people, they do get distracted. Sometimes we can pull them back and they end up becoming great brokers. And, and you know, we've, we've seen people like that. Is this industry for everyone? I'm going to have to say no. Okay. I'm definitely going to have to say no. And don't get me wrong, I've had times where I've, I've thought, is this industry really for me? Mm -hmm. Luckily, I, I am where I am. I'm, I've stuck it out and I'm here now. But definitely I would say it's, it's not for everyone. You know, there's, it's not for the faint hearted because it's, it's almost like um, going into a movie. Mm -hmm. You know, you can get your script wrong. You can, you can um, act wrong. Yeah. It only takes little things for, for a big deal to be vanished, yeah. you know? So it's, it's not for everyone. You need to have that dedication. I mean, for me, I'm, I'm on the phone all day anyway. I'll give you an example. Before, when I was in the UK, I never had a WhatsApp picture. Nobody could see who I was. When I started this job, I had to start speaking to people. Yeah. I had to put a picture up so people could relate with me. If it was uh, if it wasn't for the job, I wouldn't have adapted to it. And I know there's a lot of people who think that you know, okay, I'll be a real estate broker from nine till five. <laughs> when it gets to five p.m., they don't want to answer the phone. They 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 don't look at their messages. They you know they might be in the beach, they might be in the pool, they might be out on a meal. But um, one of the main things is obviously that that answering the call. Uh -huh. You never know which one. You never know which one's going to be the one. Yeah, I was on holiday once. Um, I think it was Saturday. I was away for my birthday. Huh? Somebody called me. Obviously, they was in Dubai, um, and he wanted to buy a four bedroom in Blue Waters. Of course, mm -hmm. I spoke to him at lunchtime on Saturday. I said to him, "No problem. We'll go have a look on uh, Wednesday." So I'll be back in Dubai Monday. Obviously, Wednesday was the nearest we could get the view in. I think by Friday, he'd signed that sixteen million. Mm -hmm. And imagine I was on holiday, not answering yeah. my phone. And that's the thing is, I think that there's something about working in real estate or something about working in Dubai that people forget the value of money. You know what I mean? Let's just say if it's a 16 million deal and let's assume you got the minimum fee, which is 2%, that's 320,000 on the board. You probably take home over 200,000 of that's 40,000 pound minimum. And some people would let that, ah, I'm on holiday. 
Yeah. Oh, I'll just let that ring out. I'll phone them back. If you don't answer, they're going to go and call the next agent and the next agent. And this is what separates, I believe, the good from the bad or the, the people who are going to make it from not. You have to understand this is not a job. This is a lifestyle. This is the rest of your life if you want to become successful. So, yeah. So to summarize, this job is not for everyone. I agree. It's not for everyone. You know, if you're one of the people that part time in, part time out, if you want to be at the pool, oh, I'll pick them up on Monday. You're not going to make it. Yeah. Good luck. You'll just cover rent and car, maybe, and we'll see what happens. Yeah. Fantastic, Jay. Thanks. I think um, anyone watching this, you know, they need to have a strong think about what they want to do because, you know, I love the fact that people come over here and want to try, but you have to be plan A, no plan B. You can't come over here thinking, oh, if real estate doesn't work out, I'll just do, because straight away you're already halfway out the door. Um, and I think it's very important that we're transparent about that. 100%. Jay, you're one of the top performers in the company. Um, you've smashed all your targets. You also are one of the most helpful brokers with making deals work in different other areas. And, you know, it's just fantastic. What makes a top 1% broker in Dubai real estate? To be honest with you, it's not that hard. Hmm. It's, it's more the dedication and it's more the focus of, okay, is this job for you? For me, I work, as I say, I always work off my name. So I'm, I'm branded by me. I'm backed by me. The, the things that put me above some, not everyone. I know some good brokers out there who are making some very, very healthy checks. Um, is that dedication of, you know, for me, it's, it's relationships, it's future business. There's a lot of sort of, you know, now, now, grab, grab. For me, everything is about business. It's about relations. That 1% of people, there isn't that many of them. So we always say this. In the industry, it's not that hard. The standard level in Dubai is, you know, it's like the giveaway real estate licenses and cereal boxes. Yeah. That's what I always make the joke yeah. of. Um, and you go to these transfers and you see some of the agents there that have, you know, sold properties and you're like, how is this? How has this happened? Yeah, we, we see a lot of brokers who it confuses us how they do deals. Mm -hmm. But again, we want everyone to make money. Exactly. But these are the clients that phone us couple of months later, hey, can you help me sell this? It's worst investment or something that wasn't for yeah. them because you need to educate the clients and we don't just push any property on people. We want yeah. to educate them and help them make the right decision. Yeah, as I said, it's for me, it's all about entry and exit, whether it's an investor, whether it's an end user. Mm. The way you go about business for these people is is completely different. So for me, I just tailor my work schedule and, and work ethic to each client mm -hmm. because for some people, it's just figures. For some people, their heart is in it. Some people, it's just their head. Some yeah. people are hard-headed. They want to tell you what's what, and, and you just kind of have to softly show them how it is. But to be in that 1%, you just kind of have to go with the flow of this person needs this. Okay, I'm here for you. Mm -hmm. This person needs this. I'm here for you. Yeah. For me, I do a lot of property management as well. So once they've bought from me, if I have an exit strategy for them, I'll present it to them. Yeah. They may or may not take it, it's up to them, but they give know, them the option. Yeah. When they buy from me, they know six months down the line, they're going to get a call from me and they'll know that if they have an issue or if they need to exit, if they need to enter into something else, we chop and change all the time. Mm -hmm. It's, it's something that I brand myself with. This is all about the service. The, the, the name is the service. But that's interesting, Jay, what you said there. It's like once they enter the Blue Waters Jay Ferris wheel, they never get off. You sell them a property. They buy a property from you. Maybe you've sold their first one. Then they go to buy something. Then they go on to property management. And then because it's an investment property, they then rent it through White & Co. Mm -hmm. And then they want to sell something else. And as long as the service and standard that we give is good enough through the J, the J brand, um, then people will stay on the Ferris wheel. And I think that's where you can find yourself doubling or tripling your business like you've done. Definitely. As I say, to be in that 1%, you need to be a cut above the rest. Mm -hmm. And to be a cut above the rest, you need to have the service. Mm. When people think of real estate, my clients definitely, they think of me. Yeah. So it could be their friend, you know, hi Jay, my friend's looking for this, can you help him? Sure, it doesn't matter if it's not in Blue Waters, we'll handle it. And I, as I say, that's what makes people those 1% brokers. Yeah. Because they have the phone book that regardless of if something's happened or not, you don't even need to offer them something. They're going to call you. It mm -hmm. might be a problem. It might be a nice problem. This is how you stay above. Okay.
Understood. That's how to become a top 1% broker. Okay. We've spoken enough about real estate and real estate brokers. And, you know, we could talk about that all day. But let's go into another topic that we both love and are big advocates for. So you live in Dubai. You love it here. What do you love so much about Dubai? Or what are the things that keep you living here? Oh, the number one is the safety aspect. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I can wear my watches. I can wear my jewelry. If I ever pop back to the UK, I'm only there for a weekend, for example. I don't take any jewellery with me. It, you know, you guys know yourself, it's not as safe as Dubai. So yeah, number one is the safety aspect. Go where you want, when you want, mm. without having to worry. Next thing is obviously the weather. Yeah, It's super easy to get up in the morning. Whether you've got a hard meeting, an easy meeting, weather's there for you so yeah. you, you can get up with a smile you don't have to worry about oh it might rain today should i take a jacket with me mm -hmm. things like this and and just the the free motion of the country everyone is in the same boat you know no one's had a bad morning because it was raining no one's had a bad morning because the the car's frozen over yeah yeah yeah. these little things you, you don't understand how much it, it adds to the value of being here mm -hmm. and the value to your lifestyle that's one of the no, I, 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 I wholeheartedly agree with you there, Jay. And so is Dubai home for you now, or could you ever see yourself leaving this place? Well, I've been here nearly three years now. I've only been back to the UK once to see my mum. Okay. And has she been out here to see you? She's been here maybe five times. There we go. So that's the difference. Why? Which it's the, the same price as a flight back home for a flight to get her here. So, you yeah, know, I've said uh, to my mum, you know, if you, if you need to see me, you I've know got what a I holiday have. for you. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Amazing. Yeah, so Dubai is home. When you're not being a real estate extraordinaire and selling properties on Blue Waters, um, what does Jay do in his spare time in the best city in the world? What's not to do, to be honest. Uh, but to be honest with you, recently I've gotten into paddle tennis. You know yourself, we, uh, we get very competitive with this. It's quite new to me. Um, but again, it's another thing I yeah. sort of stepped into and wasn't half bad at. So we carried on. So yeah, the only times I'm pretty much away from my phone is either I'm asleep or I'm with a uh, paddle racket in my hand. Yeah. Obviously, we go to the gym when we can. Don't get me wrong, we have to slip up a bit on the gym sometimes because, you know, we might have a, a heavy phone call to take. But pretty much that's the only times I'm not by the phone. So if I'm not in the office, I'm in the gym, I'm in the paddle court, I'm at the beach, for example. Uh -huh. Everything you can enjoy about the country is, as I said, the weather. But I think that's very important, Jay, that even though you moved over here, yes, you're doing different things, but you're treating this like normal life. Mm -hmm. You don't spend every single day treating this place like it's a holiday. You go to the gym, you go to work, you do your hobby. And on the weekends, you have some time with your loved ones or whoever you want to spend time with. And, uh, and that's the big problem that I find is some people move here and they just can't get out of holiday mode. And I always say to people, if you treat it like a holiday, it will be a holiday. Um, so it's good that you can just live a normal life here and it doesn't have to be going out partying all the time. Definitely, yeah. As we said earlier, a lot of people, they get caught up and they are out every weekend. And for some people, it works. Me personally, I'm a bit older now. I, I can't keep up with the youngsters. Yeah. The energy levels aren't there. So I just hold that back for, you know, the, the phone calls we have to make and the, the meetings we have. But again, like you say, it's, for me, it's home. Hmm. People ask me all the time, how are you getting on over there? I wish I'd moved over there with you. It's a no-brainer for me. For me, it's home. I, I don't think I will ever shift anywhere else. Mm. Um, as you say, it's not a holiday. Even when I landed, it wasn't a holiday. I knew I had landed in the new home. I took my place. I knew where I wanted to be. It wasn't a holiday, so it was fine for me to sort of fall into position, get back to real world straight away. It, it yeah. wasn't even like I... oh. This place is nice. Yeah. Let's see how we get on. It was straight into home mode. So Understood. I think a lot of people that, that are trying to make that transition and whether it be real estate or not, come here thinking, yes, this is me now. So Jay, you were just coming on to that there at the end of what you were saying. If someone is on the fence about moving to Dubai, about going into real estate or even just leaving their home country. I know we're huge advocates for Dubai, but I'm also a huge advocate for getting out of your hometown and seeing that there's more out there in the world, what would you say to them? Pros and cons. Mm. I'd say put your pros and cons on paper. I'm 99.9% .9 sure there's going to be more pros than cons. Mm -hmm. 
So whether it be Dubai, whether it be another country, we do get stuck in our motions. You know, for me, I was in the same place for a very long time. I've got no bad words to say about it, but looking at how far I've come since being there, again, it's the biggest pro you can find. Mm. Just not being in your same routine, same place, uh, it's, it's a huge factor in terms of, okay, should I, should I not? Just, just look at what's here and what's not here. Mm. It, there's there's uh, so much you can choose to do, choose to be, people to meet, people to see. If you're on the fence, as I say, look at what you have there and look at what you could have here. Mm. It's only going to be one answer. Amazing, yeah. I think that's pretty good uh, wisdom there. Okay, the next question. This is one that some people have shied away from, and there's no problem. You can choose to answer it however you want, Jay. Um, but, you know, you've been here two and a half years. What is the most commission or incentives that you've taken home in your pocket in a month? Okay, let's be careful about what we say. Uh... I don't need everyone to know these answers. I will say, um, for example, I've had a hundred thousand dirham bonus before in one month. Mm -hmm. I'll give you that one. Um, so that's twenty thousand pounds as a bonus. That's a bonus. That on was, top of what you earned. That was on top of what I earned. That was free of charge, courtesy mm -hmm. of Mr. Callum White. Thank you very much. Okay. Fantastic. Well, listen, if that's all you want to let go, no problem. That's perfect. That's all you can have. That's all. Um, and finally, the last question, Jay, is what's a statement or a saying that you live by? This one's easy. Live and maintain. It's from one of my favourite films, uh, Paid in Full, which I watched when I was a kid. Not sure if anyone's seen it, but there's a guy in it and uh, he's very well off, up there with the best of them. Um, but his his motto was live and maintain, and I try to live by that now because you know we do okay. We could get carried away, but if we stay focused, as you say, live and maintain, we'll always be there. Okay, fantastic. Well, Jay, I really appreciate you coming and doing this. I know I've had to take some time out your schedule, and I know you're a busy guy, um, but I'm sure that anyone watching will get huge amounts of value from this. Um, so thanks so much, mate. Appreciate it. Pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank <laughs> you.